Welcome, everybody. Welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome, fellow deplorables. Welcome, all you rock dwellers, all you Dreyfus society, all you sycophants, all you stinkos, all you hateful people who celebrate the president and honor America. You're always welcome here. This is the Conservative Commandos radio show. I'm Rick Drader, and I'm coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network. And Joining me as my co-host is the patriot from the Battleborn State, the Silver State of Nevada, and that is Sharon Angle. Sharon, welcome back to Conservative Commandos. Thanks so much, Rick. It's great to be here on the eve of our telethon on AUN TV uh, next week on Labor Day. We're having that telethon, and of course, uh, the telethon is uh, to premiere the uh, documentary Stolen Choices. It is a look at the election integrity crisis in America. Uh, we'll, we'll be interrupting that with different guests that we have on to talk about the um, the election integrity crisis. In fact, we're going to talk to a couple of them today on our show uh, just to kind of get your appetite for the rest of the of the show uh, coming up on uh, Labor Day weekend, Monday the 7th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, here on AUN TV. That's AUN TV.com. And of course, if you're in Northern California, you're in luck, you can watch it right on the television. So uh, we're g- kind of concentrating on that um, piece of news out there. I think everybody is, I guess. Uh, Heritage Foundation has been reporting a 900% increase in their website traffic uh, about the fraud. They have that uh, fraud piece on their website, and people are really looking at it. I've also been getting the emails from everybody. Get involved in this election. So people are really interested in this uh, topic. And, of course, there's, it's always in the news these days, always in the news. I, I have an article here um, about a fellow who has now um, come forward, a Democrat operative who has, he's a, he's a whistleblower, is I guess what you'd say, although it's not in a government organization, but he's telling on, on the Democrats that they're paying the homeless uh, they are taking advantage of the elderly. They're posing as registered voters, and they're printing up fake ballots. So uh, wow. we're in for a wild ride. I totally agree with that, Sharon. And it's all—it's all to get rid of Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump is a thorn in their side. They hate him. They hate anything that he stands for. By the way. Donald Trump is the first president since Ronald Reagan to actually put America first. So they don't like him. They don't like him. They want to get rid of him. <laughs> well, here's one of, one of these quotes from this article. It says, uh, you have a postman who is a rabid anti-Trump guy, and he's working in Bedminster or some Republican stronghold. He can take those filled out ballots and knowing 95% are going to be Republican, he can just throw them in the garbage. Well, that is, you're a, a postman, a U.S. mailman. That's what he's saying. That's you have a. He needs <laughs> yeah. to, that he needs to be that mailman. He needs to be reported. And you know, Sharon, this should be a, a a lesson for anyone who is intending to mail in their ballot. Don't put it in your your mailbox and wait. Take it directly to the post office. Take it directly to the post office and mail it there. Well, here's another one. Cast your own vote because this guy says that his staff impersonate voters in person on Election Day. The team looks for registered voters who are not active voters and obtain their personal information so they can go in and impersonate them. The process is easy when there is no voter ID law in place to prevent such fraud. The fake voters go to a designated polling place and sign the real voter's signature as best as possible. 
The fraud often reaches the highest levels of election officials, according to this operative. His staff bends the corners of their ballots in a specific place to tip off their allies on the state boards of election. So they're, they're saying, let this go through. You might not like the way I signed this, but I'm one of you. Incredible. Crazy, Incredible. isn't it? Just it, crazy. And that this guy is telling it. Uh, you know, you wonder what made him decide to tell all. If he's a true patriot after all, if he's seeing that, you know, this just cannot stand, that we have to have fair and honest elections no matter which side of the political spectrum you're from. It benefits both sides to have safe, honest, and secure ballots. Well, Sharon, we're going to have voter fraud as long as there's a benefit to the Democrat side. And Sharon, when I say that, it's nothing is going to change until the Democrats see that there is no advantage for them in ballot harvesting and voter fraud. Nothing's going to change until these people are brought to the table and agree we need fair and honest elections. And Sharon, when I say to you that Republicans need to get into the game, wherever ballot harvesting is legal, Republicans need to take advantage of it. I, I'm sorry, I know you disagree with me, but Sharon, the only way for the Democrats to uh, uh, finally agree that we need fair and honest elections is for them to see it's no longer to their advantage. Okay, so you live in the heart of some of this really bad oh, activity. Uh, they're talking about Patterson, New Jersey. I don't know how close that is to you, but you've got a not close. You've got a Democrat councilman and a councilman elect there who were charged with election fraud, along with two Democrat operatives. In one instance, officials alleged that one of the operatives collected unsealed mail-in ballots from voters and delivered them sealed to the Board of Elections. Similarly, in May, this might, a former Pennsylvania judge pleaded guilty to stuffing ballot boxes for Democrats in exchange for payments from political operatives in 2014, 2015, and 2016 primary elections. That same mm -hmm. month, Pennsylvania election officials admitted that duplicate mail-in ballots were sent to voters. Isn't that, that's just outrageous that we've got these guys, they're admitting it now. And what's going to be done, Rick? What's going to be done? I have done? no idea. I have no idea. Are they going to be arrested, prosecuted, or are they going to go to jail? They should. They, they should. should. <laughs> we should. And, and, you know, those that say this doesn't go on, I, you know, the denial is just amazing to me. How can they say that when it's all over the news? Well, and then, Sharon, the other part is, which is, as Stalin said, it's, it's not those who vote that count, it's those that count to votes. Who's to say? Who's to, fi who's to say that the ballot counters, that they're honest, that they're reputable, that they're also not crooks? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know if Stalin knew Boss Tweed, but Boss Tweed was the one that said he he uh, only needed he didn't need to count the votes. He just just needed to be the counter of those there votes. There you go. <laughs> well, maybe maybe they exchange notes. Sharon, let's take a break and get our on the other side. We'll let our audience know who our guests are for today. And you are listening to and watching the Conservative Commanders Radio Show with Sharon Engel. Yours truly, Rick Trader. And uh, today's show, like all our shows, is being brought to you by the First Amendment, protected by the Second. We'll be right back over after this break. We'll let you know who our guests are and the topics for our conversations. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? 
You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. And once again, we want to welcome you back to, to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Engel and yours truly, Rick Trader. And Sharon, the hallmark of our show being our great guest, who will we be speaking with today? Well, our first guest is Helen Raleigh, who's a senior contributor to The Federalist. She's also an immigrant from China and, China and the owner of Red Meadows Advisors, LLC, an immigration policy fellow at the Centennial Institute in Colorado. She also is the author of a couple of books, Confucius, Never Said, and The Broken Welcome Mat. Uh, she's going to be talking to us a day, today about an article she wrote, it's time to stop paying colleges for overpriced leftist indoctrination. Wow, we're, we're going to be interested to hear from her because it's this leftist indoctrination that's meeting us now in the streets yes. of our big cities. Um, our second guest is Jeff Cruer, who is the host of Ringside Politics, which airs weekly on WGSO 990 AM in New Orleans. He's also a political columnist and the author of America's Last Chance. He's going to be talking about an article he wrote, Trump is Vaccine for the Deadly Swamp Virus. And, of course, we're going to get J um, Jeff involved with uh, a little bit of talk on election integrity. Our final guest is Jay Delancey, who is the director of Voter Integrity Project, North Carolina. And... Uh, Jay has been going after this kind of election fraud uh, for many years now since he retired from his military career in 2011. And he was an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel there. And then he has his master's degree in business and in journalism. 
He's going to be talking to us about election officials in New York and North Carolina ignoring the evidence of illegal voters. All right, so we've got some great guests. Sharon, I want to talk about this this violence in the streets. Mm. You know, the, the Democrats like Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they say they're going to be the great healers of all this. But uh, Kamala Harris was on the Colbert show the other day talking about the rioting in the streets, and she says it's not going to stop, nor should it stop. This is a person who's running to be the vice president of the United States saying this rioting is not going to stop, nor should it stop. That's her own words, Sharon. I'm not paraphrasing. Those are her own words. It should not stop. It's not going to stop, and it shouldn't stop. And that's the kind of person who wants to be our vice president. Well, and it's this kind of attitude that has caused um, governors, councilmen, mayors to actually attack the police and say, you stand down. Don't you come against these protesters. You let these things happen. Well, yep. when they let these things happen, people get killed. And yep. uh, we, we've had a double homicide and a wounding in Keno uh, by a kid in Kenosha. He, he's 17 years old. And he uh, is being charged now with intentional homicide to first-degree murder in Illinois. And the rec uh, these homicide charges amount to second-degree murder charges in other places. If he's convicted of these first-degree homicide charges as an adult, he will face an al a life sentence because Wisconsin doesn't have the death penalty. But it's an interesting story because uh, Rittenhouse, his name is Kyle Rittenhouse, he's 17. His attorney says this is a clear case of self-defense. He was in imminent danger of serious bodily harm or death. So it's 100% self-defense. So when did self-defense become a crime? Now, did they arrest any of the guys that were chasing him down the street? No. They just arrested the kid that turned around to defend himself. Well, Sharon, I think he had a real reason to be fearful. We have seen many, many, many cases now, heard many, many, many stories how Trump supporters are being accosted by these demonstrators. People leaving the White House last Thursday night were accosted by the demonstrators, pushed, shoved, spat upon. Senator Rand Paul was saved by the Secret Service. He was pulled away from this crowd who were pushing him and shoving him. A U.S. Senator, he is, Rand Paul, all right, had to be rescued by the Secret Service. There's many, many, many stories out there about people leaving the White House and how they were treated by these demonstrators. There was a demonstrator in Portland, Oregon, who was shot and killed the other night because he was wearing a hat in support of the president. So I think Kyle maybe had some real justification to be worried. Real justification. Well, that's what his attorney says. He says that these guys began screaming and that Kyle needed to be killed, and they were going to kill him, and they started relentlessly hunting him as he ran down the street attempting to retreat. And he uh, fired and disarmed the individual, hitting him in the arm, and then he shot and killed another person who was attacking him. And, he sa and his attorney says, I've got to tell you, if you really think about this, in this war zone, in this chaos that is occurring in this city, in America, in the middle of Wisconsin, the only individuals... Uh, let's see, that we're attacking him and putting him at risk of serious bodily harm. That's who Kyle shot. He didn't kill, he didn't shoot anybody that wasn't coming at him is what his attorney is saying. And of course, the, the media is painting him as a cold-blooded killer. So we, we really do have chaos in the streets and, and it's a pretty one-sided um, argument these days about, uh, who gets justice and who doesn't, it seems like. And then, once again, 
We got Kamala Harris, the woman that's running for the vice president, saying that this is not going. And I'm reading here. Everyone should take note that on both levels that we're not going to let up. We should not and we should not stop. That's Kamala Harris's words. I'm reading verbatim what she said. And this is a woman along with Joe Biden. They're going to be the big they're going to be the healers. They're going to bring both sides together. You know, boy, have we heard this story before? Remember Barack Obama? He was going to bring both sides of this. Uh, but he was going to bring both sides together. He turned out to be the most divisive president we have had since Abraham Lincoln, where Lincoln divided the country north and south. Barack Obama divided the country left and right, male and female, black and white. I, I think a lot of this violence can be laid at the feet of Barack Obama. Remember when he said the police in Cambridge acted stupidly? Yeah. That's Barack Obama. Well, we live in a crazy world. We do. And, and this election seems to have just ignited the craziness that that we've been seeing it's just uh, uh an all out push i think once again we've had uh from the beginning of this year with this covid-19 that's a push to isolate us get us in our homes make us stand down not not get together not discuss things not go out in public where uh we can have community and and actually good discussions and then right on the heels of that uh, they are kind of running out of excuses you know they said well we can't go to the polls because of the emergency of COVID-19 however that emergency seems to be waning uh, less and less cases we hardly hear of cases anymore and let alone deaths and they uh Riots now are causing the emergency. Well, we yeah, can't but, vote in way, person now because of the rioting. Sharon, you talk about the this emergency and the reemergence of the Chinese Wuhan flu. We're hearing stories how on college campuses that the the flu is is uh, starting to rage again. Alabama, University of Alabama, they uh, they report hundreds and hundreds of cases of it. You know how many of those cases resulted in a hospitalization or death? Zero. Zero. <laughs> Zero. I, there were like two hundred because cases. they're testing people. They are finding antibodies. They're saying, "Okay, you've got it," but they don't have really any symptoms. They're not sick. Nope. They're not going to the hospital. Nope. It, so, can you really say that they actually have it? If they've nope. got antibodies, they're probably not going to get it anyway. All right. Well, Sharon, talking about great conversations, we're going to have one with Helen Raleigh. She's going to be joining us. She's a senior editor, a senior contributor at The Federalist, and she's written a very interesting article. It's time to stop paying colleges for overpriced leftist indoctrination. Probably a lot of that college education is running the rampant on the streets of Portland, Oregon, and Kenosha, Wisconsin. Don't go away. We'll be right back with our first guest. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. 
ask about the free prescription discount card. I'm so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. And welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader. And once again, as a reminder for rebroadcast of our show, be it radio, be it TV, check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. And with that, Sharon Angle, we do have our first guest with us. And please make that an introduction. Oh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce Helen Raleigh, who is a senior contributor to The Federalist. She's an immigrant from China, and she's the owner of Red Meadow Advisors, LLC, and an immigration policy fellow at the Centennial Institute in Colorado. She is the author of several books, including Confucius Never Said and The Broken Welcome Mat. As a writer, Helen has published nationally and internationally in both English and Chinese. Congressman Bob Schaefer called her award-winning autobiography, Confucius Never Said, one credible and powerful example of how rugged individualism and gritty self-determination secure the American dream. Helen, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show. Thank you guys for having me. It's always our pleasure, Helen, and you've written a great article, It's Time to Stop Paying Colleges for Overpriced Leftist Indoctrination. Oh, tell us how you really feel, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Yes, that's why I said, tell us how you really feel. I, I just, you, you know, it's... Um, I guess we get tired of people nuancing everything, trying to be politically correct, and it's just refreshing to have you just put it out there right in the title of the article. You're not uh, mincing any words. Nobody has to guess. <laughs> yeah, nobody has, has to guess how I really feel about things. That's for sure. That's for sure. Okay, so let's talk about these Ivy League schools. This is where the tuition is incredibly high. And let's talk about the uh, education that the kids are getting now. Right. So I, I'm just really outraged by this analysis performed by Market, Market Watch. So as we know, now is the back to school seasons and some colleges, colleges supposedly reopen. Um, but based on this uh, analysis by Market Watch, so among the colleges whose endowment are on the top 100%, uh, I mean, top 100 in the country, 
um, about 35 of them kept their tuition about the same as last year. And about 39 of them actually increased their tuition, even though most of them offer either online education or a combination of limited in-person instruction and online education. So kids are not getting the same education, same college experiences as they used to be, but they're still paying more. Just use Harvard example. Harvard is sitting on $40 billion endowment fund. Mm -hmm. It's actually, and it's the one announced is gonna offer online education only for this four semester. And it increased its tuition by 4%. So mm. the cost of attending Harvard is about $32,000 a year. I just think American families deserve a break from all this nonsense. <laughs> Well, they're really not paying for an education. They're paying for the name, aren't they? I mean, it, it looks like all, all it is buying that name, I graduated from Harvard or I gradu graduated from Cornell rather than act an actual education. Is that what you're seeing? That's true. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this market watch. They they say it's it's going to be all online these days. No contact with the teacher. Really, why why go to school? Why why enroll? Why you know uh, what's the benefit? I guess that's what I'm asking. Right. So there so there are two two aspect of this. Right. For one is uh, some schools are offer hybrid a hybrid model, which they will have limited in-person instruction for small classes, and then they will, mostly they will come uh, have online and uh, online uh, classes, but for students, so when students return to, uh, to campus, many places on campus are closed, you know, like the library, and like many lecture halls, and the dining halls, and they only open a very limited place, so students basically turn, change from um, quarantine at home with their with their aging parents <laughs> or their young siblings annoying them now to quarantine on campus and they're still paying seven over seventy thousand dollars a year so it's it, yes. they're not getting the full college experiences and one of the person who interviewed them by, by market watch she mentioned she couldn't go to any lab classes so for her to you know to in her de her degree she really need to have the experience of working the lab so without working the lab so she's basically getting half the education but still paying for more tuition i don't understand why to college administrators in this country, the tuition can only go up. That's the only way to make, you know, they, they can only go up. There's no way to go down. That just, that just baffles me. And the second thing is, even if they return to the in-person instructions, what do our kids learning today, right? We, we look at what happened this summer. And if you open a college curriculums, what you see is anti-American rhetorics, you know, the critical race theories, systematic oppressions, and systematic racism. And what what happened to mass literature and something else that that's, can actually help the kids get a job so they can pay off the student loan? And what are we sending, what are American families sending their kids to learn? That's a question that we should ask. And I think that many parents are waking up. You know, one benefit, probably the only benefit when young people have to take online classes at home, is their aging parents get to look over their shoulder once in a while to find out what they're actually learning? Like, what are, you, what are you as a parent actually paying for? I think many parents are waking up to say, why am I, you know, borrowing so much money and uh, mortgage my house paying for you to getting all this supposedly, you know, Education is really indoctrination. I'm not going to help you get any job. And it's actually going to turn you come back to hate me, right? Well, that that seems to be the the problem or the plan, it, depending on your perspective, I guess. Um, the, the fellow Hamptons president, Dr. William Harvey, in your article, he acknowledged <laughs> that cutting tuition and fees will be a financial burden for the school, but he recognized that at, at this difficult time, 
Paying tuition and fees is also a financial burden for parents and others. Hopefully, more college administrators will be as thoughtful as Harvey and do the right thing for American families. Um, you know, how can it be a more of a financial burden on the school if you don't have your teachers going to classes anymore? You don't real, really need as many teachers if you're doing it online. Uh, you can have... Uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me that they would raise the tuition at a time when they've closed down the campuses. Even the facility itself doesn't require as much um, electricity or any of those kinds of things because they just don't have the use of those classrooms. So, I, you know, I'm, I guess I take exception that um, they're going to be under some kind of financial burden. You just mentioned Harvard's got... Uh, millions. So, so where's the financial burden? Well, so from the school standpoint, their argument is, well, we do have to, you know, impose uh, this uh, additional, implement additional house and safety requirements, you know, required by the CDC, like extra glasses and uh, to keep people stay apart and, you know, additional cleaning staff, you know, all these things are understandable. But at the same time, as you mentioned, you know, at the end of the day, while some costs increased, right, the house care, the house cleaning staff, those are understandable. At the same time, we when the school sent the children back, kids back in the, in the spring and then closed the entire summer, they have much less utility cost. Um, you know, they, they do not have to uh, uh, dining cost. So there's, there is a cost. And then there's also the, on the revenue side. The, the colleges are arguing, well, when we send the students back, we lose the traditional revenue sources like dining and, you know, entertainment, et cetera. Um, but at the same time, you know, again, there's also cost of saving too. What I'm saying is, in, in my article, I cited a um, statistic from uh, somebody who worked at a barrel. Basically, in the last decade, our school uh, college tuition increased uh, 45 percent in the yes. last decade alone. It, it's doubled in uh, inflation every year in the last decade. So I'm asking why why college tuition can only go up, right? Where, where our kids are not getting quality education and we're in the middle of a pandemic and they're not even getting the full college experiences. So why is tuition can only go up? And the, the Hampton College example you give is very good. It's a historically black college. They do not have a huge endowment like Harvard. Harvard has 40 billion. It's a B, not a million. It's a B. Harvard has yes. 40 billion. How Hampton has has about 250 million. It's begin with M. But they are able to recognize, hey, if we're only going to offer students online education, we're not giving them a full college experience. It's time we take a little bit of hit too. They cut the tuition for 15%. That's the right thing to do. Well, no, why, why, why can't more colleges, especially like Harvard and Cornell, sitting on billions of dollars endowment? Their argument is, oh, we don't like to use our endowment. We want to save them for the rainy day. Please, somebody just remind them the rainy day is here in the middle of a global pandemic. What else are you waiting for? <laughs> exactly right. We've been talking with our guest, Helen Raleigh, about an article that she wrote. Uh, pretty forceful title. It's time to stop paying colleges for overpriced leftist indoctrination. I'm Sharon Engel here with my co-host, Rick Trader, and we're coming to you from the Conservative Commandos radio stations and around the world on the Internet with TalkStream Live, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, NetTalk America, and AMFM 24-7. We'll be right back after these messages.
Attention homeowners. Do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 800-917-8671. Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind in financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled regardless of your medical condition as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents and they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp, call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. And welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader. And once again, for rebroadcast, check out that website of ours, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. Be sure to like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Helen Raleigh is our guest. She's a senior competitor at The Federalist, and we're discussing an article that Helen wrote. It's time to stop paying colleges for overpriced leftist indoctrination. Helen, $40 billion, that's just an incredible figure. And I'm glad you brought it up with Sharon that they justify it, but they justify 
raising the price of tuition 4%, not wanting to go into that $40 billion. And as you pointed out, they say, it's for a rainy day. My God, if this isn't a rainy day, we've never seen a shower. <laughs> you know, we've never seen it. It's totally ridiculous. But Helen, I think that education started to go down this slippery slope a long, long time ago. It's nothing recent. And I'll tell you why I say this. About 20 years ago, I heard a statistic on radio talking about Rutgers University in New Jersey. That uh, 20 years prior to that, say 40 years ago now, there was one employee for every 14 students. At the time I heard this statistic, and as I said, it was 20 years ago, there was one employee for every three students. So I think part of the problem with education is too much administration. There's too much garbage on campus. And another thing, and I'm going off on a little rant here. I have a friend who works at a local community college. Now, you might think community college might be the, the alternative to uh, a, a four-year college or whatever. Well, what happens with this particular community college is it's very political that all the politicians stack their, their relatives, their friends, their supporters in jobs in, in community college. And by the way, they're around this particular community college. And I won't say the name. I won't say the name of Gloucester County Community College. But this is a very Democrat-controlled area. So you can imagine, you can just imagine who works at this college, who teaches at this college, who administrates at this college when the politicians stack it with all their friends and relatives and supporters. Helen, you think I'm thinking too far outside the box here? <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, Rick. It just hurts. <laughs> oh, I think I told you what I'm thinking. <laughs> but uh, can you see that as another reason for the increase in, in college tuitions today? That administration and staffs and employees, it's too top heavy. Yes, that, that part is true. So there are multiple reasons why why the college tuitions are so high in America. One of them, you are correct, the college has increased the number of administrators who do not actually do not teach, you know, but they are there like the diversity officers, the, you know, they, they are the ones who uh, police people about their speak, speech uh, on campus. And so those are the, those are the people who draw six figure salaries and they are the ones who don't actually do not teach and they are they, they are part of the reason the, the top heavy the increased number of administrators to student ratio is explain part of the reason why the college tuition is high another reason which is the you know it's really the elephant in the room it's the federal subsidies of tuition I wrote an article about this a um, couple of months ago to talk about why our tuition is so high and, and I think many of us on the right or center right recognize that it's really the, you know, we know it's economic 101. When you subsidize something, the price is going to go up and people mm -hmm. are going to demand, the, and you're going to increase the demand and the price is going to go up, right? So right. Ever, ever since the federal government started subsidizing college tuition from the 50s, the, the college tuition has never looked back. They always, they have always gone up. Doesn't matter whether it's economic downturn or we call, you call it a booming time, it's always gone up. And today the college tuition really for many American families are just not affordable. You know, right. we shouldn't be surprised why so many young people want to support Bernie. They want to get a, well, I mean, Senator Bernie Sanders, they want to get a free college tuition because it's not affordable. So that's another reason why, you know, college tuition is because of federal subsidy. Unless we cut back federal subsidy, the tuition will only go up. It will never come back down. And it's a it's a disaster. Well, Helen, let's talk about the other part of your article. And by the way, we're talking with Helen Raleigh and her article. It's time to stop paying colleges for overpriced leftist indoctrination. Well, let's talk about that leftist indoctrination. You write in your article, rather than teaching students knowledge and helping them develop 
critical and independent thinking, American youth are being indoctrinated with Marxist or neo-Marxist ideology, anti-American rhetoric, critical race theory, political correctness, and opposition and self-impressed victimhood and other <laughs> ideas popularized by the, ra the radical left. Oh, well, Helen... There's a lot of garbage being taught in those colleges for that $72,000 a year, isn't there? Yes, and Rick, that's not even the worst part. The worst part is, if you look at our society's problems today, we can trace almost all our problems back to college campuses. You mm -hmm. know, people like you and I used to say, Oh, you know what? We don't care what they learn at the college because once they grad, once the students graduate, going into the real world, then mm -hmm. they're going to learn what they learned at college. It doesn't apply to the real world. Guess what? We learned this summer, and probably you know even before this summer, we learned when when the kids got indoctrinated with the leftist idea. When they come to the real world, they do not adjust to the real world. They want to change the real world just to look like just like right. a college campus. So, so college campuses, and I see this happen in China too, back in the Cultural Revolution, things always started in college campuses where ideas are formed, where excuses are made, where things, you know, uh, being, uh, is, where cases have been made, right? So once you have those ideas and uh, theories being formed, you say, okay, looting is perfectly fine, um, you know, uh, ruin your property is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Once you have intellectuals on campus make a justification and the cases of ideas, then they teach our kids. Now our kids take those ideas, then they spread when they come to the real world. And then they try to reshape the real world back right. to what campus is promoting. To me, that is the most dangerous part of this whole cycle. That's why I'm saying why are we continue financing it, right? I quote, you know, in my article, I quoted uh, Lawrence Reed, the, the former president from FEE. He's he's my he's a dear friend of mine. He's a freedom fighter, and I think he's exactly right. You know, someday when America falls into socialism, when we look back, we can blame the uh, the indoctrination of college education for it. You know, because right. we find those indoctrination assume. They are actually education, they're not. Helen, I wanted to touch on one other thing you have in your article, and I think it's very important, and unfortunately, we only have it about another minute. The Google Career Certificates, I didn't know about this. Could you tell our audience a little bit about the Google Career Certificates? Yeah, absolutely. So for all the parents and young people out there, you do not have to go to a, a pay for expensive for your college to get a valuable education and launch a good career. So this uh, Google Career Certificate was launched by Google last year. It covers somewhere the high demand skill set such as data analysis and the project management. Each uh, track is about six months long and you only have to pay as, as much as $49 a month. And mm -hmm. Google and, uh, and the 50 other American big companies like Walmart and the Boeing all said they're going to recognize this Google certificate as equivalent to four-year college degree. Think about uh, this. Now, mm -hmm. is any of that credit it transferable to a university? That you part know? I don't know, but who cares? If you have, a, <laughs> if you pay hundred dollars get a Google certificate and you launch you to a ninety thousand dollar a year career with no skill to know that, you are way ahead of hundreds and thousands of uh, young people right. you're, you know, at the same age. You know, why right. do you want to go back to college? Hey, Sharon Engel, maybe I could get a uh, Google certificate for producing a radio and television show. I don't know. But Helen Rowley, we want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Conservative Commandos. Helen, please tell our audience how they can follow your work and what you do and read your articles. Thank you, Rick. So they can follow me on Twitter at HRowleySpeaks or go to my website, uh, HelenRowleySpeaks.com. Helen, again, thank you so much for joining us. Take care and God bless. Thank you. And you are listening to and watching the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Engel and your truly Rick Trader. Longtime friend of the show, Jeff Cruer, is going to join us after the break talking about Trump is vaccine for the deadly swamp virus.
Don't go away. We'll be right back with our next guest. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Broken AC, $4,600. Water heater, $1,500. Fridge on the fritz, a thousand bucks. You need home warranty coverage from the Home Service Club for around a dollar a day. If any of your covered appliances and systems break down, HSC will either repair or replace them. HSC provides coverage of up to 47 different appliances and systems in your home. I trust HSC. HSC has over 15,000 pre-screened, highly rated technicians with the fastest response time in the industry. They cover everything from ACs, stoves, fridges, pool pumps, and more. Call the number on your screen now for a free no-obligation quote from a trusted HSC specialist about a home warranty for your entire home, backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now and get one month free plus $75 off your first year of coverage. One month free and $75 off your first year. The Home Service Club. I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for dental visits. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for transportation to my doctor. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay to have my prescriptions delivered directly to my home. Did you? These and more are important benefits some Medicare Advantage plans may give you. So if you're eligible for Medicare, call us right now because you may be eligible to enroll in a plan with amazing additional benefits. Some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for services like these dental visits vision coverage hearing coverage home delivery of drugs even gym memberships some plans may include no copays for many services and zero deductibles don't wait to find out if you're eligible to enroll in a plan that may include some of these wonderful benefits you deserve call us right now the call is free the information is free and there's no obligation make this free call now to learn if you're eligible to enroll in a medicare advantage plan that may include additional benefits you want call us right now Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. And once again, we want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcast of our show, check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. You can find our TV show there, our radio show there, as well as a lot of other terrific articles and great information. And with that, Sharon, our next guest is with us, longtime friend of the show. And as you do with all our friends and guests, please make him feel welcome. Well, it's always a pleasure for me to introduce our good friend, Jeff Cruer, who is the host of Ringside Politics, which airs weekdays on WGSO 990 AM in New Orleans. He is a political columnist, an author of America's Last Chance, and provides regular commentaries on Jeff Cruer YouTube channel and on www.jeffcruer.com. Jeff, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Hey, Sharon. Uh, thanks for having me. It's great to be here with you again, and also to read your latest, which is Trump is vaccine for the deadly swamp virus. Oh my goodness! Everybody's talking about vaccines these days, and right. I, they're they're kind of scary, Jeff. The the vaccines that they want to vaccinate with uh, us with, I you know I'm I'm hearing they're going to alter my DNA. Is that true? <laughs> well, you know, Sharon. Uh, 
President Trump's the only vaccine that I'm going to be taking. So uh, I don't uh, look forward to and I don't plan on taking a vaccine. Uh, I've interviewed too many people that have talked about all the health problems that have ensued from uh, other vaccines. And I'm thinking that, um, you know, uh, staying healthy, exercise, uh, trying to uh, get lots of sunlight and then take lots of vitamins, build up my immune system is, is my best road to uh, to deal with this. And if I do happen to get it, uh, I know what I'm going to be taking. It's called hydroxychloroquine. And, uh, oh, you just got us banned off of YouTube and, <laughs> and <laughs> Facebook. They hate it when we mention that, you know. Right. I, I was talking to a fellow in Peru yesterday. He got COVID-19. Guess what? He got over it. How? Co with uh, hydroxychloroquine in that regimen of zinc and and he said that uh, he's surprised that he can even get it anymore because there is such a, a um, I don't know, a worldwide prohibition bias. on it. Yeah, there's a bias against it. Uh, they're, they're really trying to make it unavailable for us. They're trying to push us toward more expensive uh, treatments. And I, I just am very suspicious about Dr. Fauci, suspicious mm -hmm. about... All of this uh, sort of uh, media drumbeat we're getting about. Well, you know, what, Jeff, I, you know, I really do believe that this is something we really can blame on Donald Trump because <laughs> he promoted it. All right. And anything that he right. promotes, you know, the left is going to shoot down. Governors like Sharon's governor and my governor are going to ban it, you know. So I think this is a justly so, uh, something you can really say, well, Donald Trump should have kept his mouth shut on this one. And I say that tongue in cheek. Well, of course, of course. Uh, anything Donald Trump says, uh, you know, you're going to have his opponents uh, condemn automatically. Whether it works or not, I mean, you know, he could cure cancer. They're going to be upset he doesn't cure heart disease. I mean, it's just one thing after another. So we're, we're fighting back, guys, and uh, trying to push as hard as we can for the next two months. Okay, so we're pushing. Rick has a mask that says Trump 2020 on it. I, he's going to put it on now. <laughs> this is the one he wears. He well, you know, Jeff. Hi, Rick. I've got one, too. I've got a white one that says Trump 2020. Well, Jeff, I figured if everyone started wearing these, then people like Fauci and the rest would say, oh, you don't need to wear a mask anymore. Right. <laughs> it's, it's been cured. <laughs> Right. I think the whole mask mania is ridiculous. Uh, and uh, I think the benefits of wearing a mask are highly overrated. And uh, I see some countries are now even going away from those mandates. And I'm hoping that uh, eventually, as these numbers keep going down, they'll be able to say, all right, we don't need to mandate mask wearing. But right. our governor's in the same. We've got a we've got a liberal Democrat governor here in Louisiana. Right. Got a mask yeah. mandate here as well. Jeff, I wanted to ask you, sorry, Sharon, for taking up your time here. I'll, I'll let you have my I'll time. I'll repay you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff, do you wear your mask in public, your Trump 2020 mask? Do you wear it in public? I um, I do not wear my mask when I'm uh, outdoors. I only wear the mask when I'm required to and go into a, a grocery or a restaurant where they say you have to wear a mask. Right. And, well, uh, I have I have worn my mask in stores. Uh-huh. And you'd be surprised how many people come up to me and say, where can I get one? I agree right. with you. This is all a farce. It's all out to get one lady, one lady. My wife and I were in a supermarket. I was wearing my uh, Trump 2020 mask. So was my wife. And this one lady passes. She goes, oh, my God. You know, so, <laughs> but other than that. All reactions I, have been positive. I was in a, a restaurant, uh, and uh, as I was leaving the uh, dinner table, put on the Trump 2020 mask, got an ovation from the uh, people in the restaurant, uh, and they also said the same thing, Rick, where can we get one? Where can we get a mask like that? So that makes me feel good. It makes me feel, all right, well, maybe uh, these polls aren't right, and you know, there's more enthusiasm from the president than uh, the media is uh, leading us to believe. Well, and I know, think Jeff, you should have applauded that lady back, Rick, and said, at least you're going in the right direction because God is a whole lot more effective than a mask. 
<laughs> right. Hey, Jeff, you know, you talk about the polls and whatever. My wife and I did a little drive over the weekend. We drove out to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And you would be amazed by the number of Trump signs that are on people's lawns. Right. Very few Biden signs. I mean, again, it was like four years ago. We saw the same thing. A lot of Trump signs, a lot of Trump flags, very few Biden things. So. Good. Well, that makes me feel good because that's the state that he's got to win. Uh, as you know, one of those battleground states that uh, Biden is going to be fighting for. Biden was just there, uh, you know, yesterday giving one of his ridiculous speeches. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be an important state. Yeah, Sharon, sorry. sorry to take your time. I'll swing it back to you. No. <laughs> That's fine. I, I don't mind the volley. Um, we uh, are talking about the vaccination, and we've been talking about how we've been vaccinating the public with Trump. Um, do you have any more good ideas for uh, folks that want to really make a difference? Use this vaccine. You say it's against the swamp, and I'm, I'm thinking the swamp is surrounding me sometimes. Well, Sharon, the swamp is everywhere, really. I mean, I think the swamp is uh, multifaceted. I would call the swamp the the bureaucracy, you know, which I guess includes the, the deep state that we see in so many of these agencies, like the Department of Justice and intelligence agencies. I think it includes um, the media, obviously, or it's completely uh, invested in all of this. Of course, the entire Democrat Party a good number of uh, establishment Republicans are invested in this, too. You know, your special interest groups that are tied to you at D.C., uh, the, the cultural swamp, too, when you're looking at uh, Hollywood. And then, of course, you got your universities, which have been taken over by these radicals. So, I mean, we're really facing it. And also corporate America. Look how left wing corporate America has become. Look how they've embraced Black Lives Matter which is a group founded by trained Marxists. So we're really facing it all across the board here, Sharon. And, and how do we punch back? How do we, how do we get um, our voice heard? I guess, uh, you know, we, we go any place near those um, uh, protests. Uh, it's pretty obvious that you go near the protest, you might get chased off, you might get somebody wanting to have your gun, and you might get shot. I mean, it's just really um, kind of frightening to even go to a place where you can counter what they're saying. It's, it's like they've, they're sucking all the oxygen out of the free speech air. Yeah, they, they believe that they can protest, but uh, we can't. And uh, if we go there, they call us Nazis. And uh, they've had some people that have been applauding the, uh, the death of the Trump supporter the other day in Portland, uh, saying, oh, that was good. We got him. He's a Nazi. And, you know, he's a Trump supporter. And uh, the real criminals, the real violent ones are the Antifa thugs that are really causing all this uh, chaos all over the country. So I think what we've got to do, Sharon, is, is utilize what we do have. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, some good talk radio um, shows. We've got programs such as this. We've got our, our internet um, sites. We've got our social media. Uh, so we've got what we can. <laughs> we've got what we can, and we just try to use it the best we can and uh, spread the word as much as possible. And then, you know, uh, try to just get out our people, get out the vote. I think it's a, another challenge is that, you know, I, I'm worried about the integrity of our vote on uh, election day, and I'm worried about what these uh, Democrats are going to do to uh, commit fraud. I've got no faith in them. I don't trust them at all, Sharon. Don't well, trust I'd them. like to talk to you more about that after the break. I think that that's a, a really uh, big issue, and one of the ways we can uh, talk about how we vaccinate against the swamp, because it is the swamp that is mostly controlling our elections, it seems like. I, I don't know how you feel about that, but I know that in California, they're saying go down and, and volunteer to be an election board worker, but they're saying, no, thanks. We don't need any more volunteers because we have put members of different individual indivisible groups within that election board. So they're kind of um, wow. making sure that their people are manning the election boards rather than just having the volunteers that have been there for ages. That That is so troubling. And this is a state that 
perfected ballot harvesting in the last election where they actually stole some races that should have gone to Republicans by collecting ballots from people at their, at their homes and uh, intimidating uh, voters. I mean, that is scary. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's a very, very important topic. we got so many important topics between now and the election we have to deal with, and, and that's one of them. Okay, well, I'm going to go to a break, but, but Rick promised me a little more time with you on the yes, other I side. <laughs> <laughs> we are coming to you from the Conservative Commandos Network Radio Studios and across the nation and internationally on the Internet with iHeartRadio Stream Live, uh, Net Talk America, tune in and AMFM 24-7. I'm Sharon Angle here with Rick Trader, my co-host. We've been talking with our good friend Jeff Cruer, who is the host of Ringside Politics in WGSO 990 New Orleans. And we've been talking about Trump as the vaccine for deadly swamp virus. We'll be right back in just a minute. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. If we want to welcome you back, this is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Engel and yours truly, Rick Trader. I want to give a shout out to our friends who are watching us on radio, on television stations in San Francisco, Sacramento, San Rafael, San Jose, Silicon Valley, Santa Rosa, Redding, Chico, Fort Bragg, and Napa Valley. Our guest this segment is Jeff Kuer. He's the host of Ringside Politics which is heard every day 
on WGSO 990 in Nolens. He's also the author of America's Last Chance. Jeff, thank you for holding through that break. We appreciate your time. Sure. Jeff the Swamp, I'm shocked. I never, never, never had any idea the swamp <laughs> was this deep. Did you? Right. you know, the president talked about draining the swamp in the last election, yes. and I was uh, hopeful that that was going to happen. But the swamp is deep, and the swamp is deadly, and uh, the swamp is destructive, uh, and the swamp is very uh, determined. Yes. And they're not going to go away quietly. They haven't gone away quietly in the four years of Donald Trump. I mean, they tried to get rid of him as a candidate, uh, as a nominee, after he was elected. They didn't even want him to take the oath of office. And then ever since he you know, took that an oath of office, I mean, it's been a constant barrage. And I've never seen a president deal with anything like this before, Rick. Never. Jeff, I am so glad you brought up ballot harvesting. Sharon Angle's not. Because every time one of our guests brings up ballot harvesting, I go on this little rant. Jeff, I think the only problem with ballot harvesting, Republicans are not better at it. <laughs> that the only way we're ever going to get fair, honest elections, reliable elections, is for the Republicans to get as dirty and nasty at it as the Democrats to drive that side to the table. To straighten That's out the point. election I mean, process. You know, Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Democrats play hardball, Rick, and Republicans are playing wiffle ball. I mean, it's a, it's a whole different game. They, they don't play as dirty. They don't play as rough. And you're right. I mean, the Democrats are doing things Republicans uh, don't do, and they always seem to be caught flat-footed. They were caught flat-footed in California uh, in, the, in the last election. They were. And with that, Sharon, I'll let you have the rest of my time. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I think that we need to talk a little bit about the strategies for this election. It seems like right. there are strategies. Um, I'm always amazed. It seems like with every new uh, thing that comes along in the news, we can tie that some way to the integrity of our elections. Uh, these protests, they're going to keep people from home from the polls, aren't they? Uh, they are. Uh, I was listening to a report today about an election in Massachusetts right now, a primary election, and they're saying there's very little activity today, election day, because everybody's voted already. So that worries me. Uh, I'm a proponent of election day voting. I'm a proponent of going to the polls with my ID, uh, looking the person in the eye, signing the register, voting, and making sure that vote is cast the right way. I cannot imagine turning over my vote mm -hmm. to someone uh, at the post office and then just feeling comfortable that that vote is going to be tabulated correctly. It could be lost. It could be tampered with innumerable ways. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm worried about the direction we're going and all the and So the fear about the riots, the fear about COVID, all of that playing together to promote the Democrats' agenda of uh, voting by mail and not voting on Election Day. Well, and I, I'm looking at some of these charges that they brought against folks like Steve Bannon and Brian Kofage. Now, we know that integrity of elections really kind of depends on the integrity of our southern border and our northern border, you know, keeping keeping our state borders even uh, secure because people like to vote across state lines and vote once in one state and once in another state. How do you feel about even that coming at this time? I don't trust any uh, state of New York prosecutor. Uh, <laughs> I don't trust that office there. I think it's sort of a rogue office. I mean, they've been going after Donald Trump and his foundation and his business and his family. Now they're going after Steve Bannon uh, and this other gentleman, Brian Kofosh, who I've interviewed on my program, and he's a triple amputee and seem to be doing it for all the right reasons. Of course, you know, they're going to have their day in court. We'll see what happens. But uh, it's interesting that when the, uh, the swamp wants to file charges against a quote unquote conservative, they do it quickly. But when we expect justice, for all these left-wing uh, political hacks and Democrats and, and deep state uh, monsters, swamp monsters, it uh, never seems to happen. So we're still waiting on justice for all these other things that have been done, the coup attempt, et cetera. 
We're waiting for justice for the uh, people that are behind the riots, the Antifa organizers. Never seems to happen, but they sure go after conservatives uh, and Trump supporters quickly. So uh, I'm a little concerned about these ballot harvesters themselves. You know, uh, California made them legal. Nevada has now made them legal. We're fighting that that case right now. We're fighting uh, against that new law and saying uh, some things that we feel are very, um, well, well should, be, should not be ignored by the courts and that we shouldn't be under that all mail-in ballot because it's more than mail-in because they have now legalized ballot harvesting, as I said. But there's an intimidation that can go on because uh, anybody can go to your house and harvest a ballot. These aren't guys that are licensed by the state to come and collect your ballot. No, I think it's all inappropriate. Uh, I think uh, that's an infringement on my privacy to have someone come knock at my door. I want to harvest my ballot. I mean, I don't want uh, them to know uh, anything about my uh, vote. Uh, I don't want to be discussing it. Uh, I want to. That's a private thing, if you ask me. And again, I wouldn't trust any ballot that I would give to any person anyway. So I think. Uh, I mean, it's so problematic. And you notice that in the last election, we had all these Republicans that were leading in all these congressional state, all the congressional seats. Then after ballot harvesting, conveniently, Sharon, they all went to the Democrats. I wonder why. I wonder how ballot harvesting was so much more effective for the Democrats than the Republicans. So I worry. Here's what I worry about, guys. I worry that we will not know the, the winner of this election on election night, mm-hmm. that this thing will drag on. And the Democrats will employ their dirty tricks to steal the election. Well, it is a a frightening thought that we will have an undecided election. Uh, You know, if if ballots get thrown out like they've been thrown out in the primaries, that could happen, couldn't it, Jeff? Sure. I mean, uh, you can have all kinds of scenarios uh, work out, uh, Sharon, and... I think, um, you know, we could be looking at something that could be a constitutional crisis. I mean, I've even had some of my legal experts say that there's a scenario where if we don't have a winner, uh, we could be looking at President Nancy Pelosi or some kind of nightmare like that. I mean, my goodness, uh, that that could keep me up at night uh, between now and the election. So uh, we got to work this out. Uh, I know the Republicans are filing some lawsuits, uh, and I think they need to intensify their legal efforts. We need to be very aggressive uh, about this. It's very troubling. Well, I, I know that uh, Election Integrity Project Nevada, and California, and Arizona are all filing lawsuits. I think it comes a little more credibility when you're a third party, n- a disinterested, a nonpartisan, I- nonprofit saying all we want is a fair and honest vote. And yet, um, what we're seeing is there these new laws that are coming in, new emergency laws. They declare a state in, of emergency. We had a, 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 an emergency legislative special session just to pass this law. And so with all this emergency, 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 we're getting some really uh, scary things happening out here in the West. Is it happening in the South? Is it happening in the Northeast? Uh, Is it happening all over? Or are we unique because we're so close to California? I think it's happening all over, Sharon. I think it's happening to a greater extent out West. I think, you know, you've got the tradition of uh, mail-in balloting there in in five states that they've done it previously, Um, all of them out West. uh, And uh, I think, um, you know, now you're seeing more and more of these efforts to make changes due to COVID and everything else uh, all over the country. Here in Louisiana, we faced uh, some COVID-related uh, changes that were made to our elections in the summer, and the Democrats want to continue this liberal uh, mail-in balloting uh, in November. Republicans are trying to stop it, and guess what? A federal judge is going to be making the decision. If it's a liberal federal judge, I think it could very well go to the Democrats and we could have virtual universal mail-in ballots for the November election. It is scary. And this is a state that Donald Trump won by 20 points in uh, 2016. And I'm worried about what could happen uh, this time. Well, I'm Sharon Engel here with my co-host Rick Trader talking with our guest Jeff Cruer about his article, 
Trump is the vaccine for deadly swamp virus. We, uh, <laughs> of course, have talked about the elections and how uh, things are not shaping up um, as we as we had hoped for a fair, honest, and secure election. And we wonder how long an emergency lasts. At least I do, Jeff Carrere. Would you tell our audience how they can friend you, follow you, get in touch with you, read your articles, get, uh, get to know more about you on your YouTube channel? Thank you so much, uh, Sharon. Uh, they can always listen to my show at WGSShow.com, weekday mornings. I'd love for them to go on my website, which is my name, Jeff Cruer, and that's C-R-O-U-E-R-E, jeffcruer.com, and they can find out about my columns and also uh, my new videos that I post, and uh, that, of course, has been one of the projects I've been most proud of over the past year, my YouTube channel, so that has been a lot of fun for me. And then, of course, uh, Twitter, uh, at Jeff Cruer, and Facebook.com slash Ringside Politics, so love to have folks uh, on board. And with that, we're going to take a break, and you are listening to and watching the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Engel and yours truly, Rick Trader. On the other side, we're going to be speaking with Jay Delancey. He's the director of the Voter Integrity Project in North Carolina, talking about election officials in New York and in North Carolina are ignoring evidence of illegal voters, people that vote in both states. Don't go away. We'll be right back right after this break. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free. And there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. I'm oh, so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. 
And once again, we want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Engel and yours truly, Rick Trader. And I want to give a shout out to folks who are listening to us on radio stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas and Reno, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Boulder and Colorado Springs, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California, Arlington, Virginia, Washington, D.C., as well as seen on the AUN Television Network in San Francisco, Sacramento, San Rafael, San Jose, Silicon Valley, Santa Rosa, Redding, Chico, Fort Bragg, and Napa Valley. And with that, Sharon, we do have our next guest with us. He's there somewhere. Please make that introduction. (laughs) Well, it's always a pleasure to introduce my friend Jay Delancey, who's the director of Voter Integrity Project North Carolina, 501c4 nonprofit organization dedicated to open and honest elections. And among the group's forensic audits, they have uncovered almost 30,000 deceased persons on the North Carolina voter rolls, more than 500 registered voters who told the New North Carolina courts that they were not U.S. citizens and a three-state criminal investigation into 149 cases of suspected interstate double voting that triggered multiple criminal referrals, five felony indictments, and four convictions. Jay retired from his military career as an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel in 2011. He has a master's degree in business and in journalism. Jay, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show and to our AUN TV Labor Day telethon. Thank you, Sharon. Bob, thank you for having me on for the telephone. I'm just honored to be here. Thank you so much. Actually, Bob was my dad. I'm Rick. I just called my Skype I, button. That's I cheated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm busted. I was like, what's his name? Oh, yeah, my phone says Bob. So that's good <laughs> so He fooled you again. Oh. Um, but uh, that's, that's one of those things, being fooled again. Uh, we we found over and over in elections uh, throughout the American history, this is not a new uh, phenomena of the 20th century or even the 21st century, this idea that uh, criminals are, are taking every opportunity, as they always do. Criminals are very opportunistic. They see a benefit to criminal activity and they engage and we're just giving them more and more opportunities it seems this day these days to engage and uh talk a little bit about the election officials in new york and north carolina ignoring evidence yes uh we notified them last thursday and um one that we sent our our opsec is that we send the files over encrypted and uh, we give them, you know, if they call us or email us, once we can confirm that they're an employee of that state, one way or the other, we will um, we will send them the passcode, you know, either by text or by voice, and give it to them. And and we told them that, and they didn't ask for it. So we're still we're still trying to figure out, uh, gee, what do you even care? Uh, <laughs> their actions say, no, we don't care. We're, we're we've got an election to carry on. We don't care about your cases of voter fraud we just don't care okay <laughs> in nevada we sent our secretary of state on the Ju- on july the 24th so uh, the the date is important because on july the 24th we had findings of uh, 40,140 uh, voters who had been either not active voters not uh, had not cast a vote or uh, for other various reasons since 2010 and we said we think these guys should be on the inactive rolls. We also sent them the names of uh, 74 people who were over the age of 105. We said we'd like to look into this. We think they might be dead. We also sent them the names <laughs> <think>? of <laughs> of double voters, people who had been voting twice in elections, and five of those actually voted twice in the 2020 primary. So we we said uh, here are our findings. And uh, we know by law we have to give you 20 days. We'd like you to answer sooner because there's a NVRA deadline 
on the uh, 3rd of August. We'd like to have your answer before then so that we can get these people cleared off the voter registration rolls because the deadline says after that date we can't take anybody off. They responded on the 20th day. We finally sent them a little poke you. Uh, so we're well past the deadline by 20 days after. And we said, uh, we haven't heard from you. Would you please respond? And they said, oh, we couldn't possibly respond until August the 31st. <laughs> and August the 31st now has come and gone, and we still haven't heard from them. So, I, you know, it sounds like the same thing that you're getting. It's better to delay than to even deny or to, uh, to even accept the challenge, the findings. What do you do about that, Jay? Well, we shame them. Uh, in Florida, <laughs> we, uh, I mean, we, we did this. This is the second time we've done this fire drill. We did it in Florida, and the, the, their uh, Secretary of State, mind you, they, they all had R's behind their name, too. Um, so don't think this is a partisan issue. Their Secretary of State never acknowledged receipt uh, in writing. I did get it on the phone call. I did get, yeah, we got it. Okay. That was all I got. They didn't, uh, to the best of our knowledge, they never investigated any of it. And they let the statute of limitations wear out. And one of the people we had found, she was uh, allegedly, she was living in North Carolina, but she'd also voted in Florida. And when push came to shove, the detective in North Carolina was able to obtain a sworn statement from the girl's mother in Florida saying, no, my daughter didn't do it, I did. So she mm. committed voter impersonation fraud, but it could not be prosecuted in North Carolina. So I drove down to Flagler County, that's Daytona Beach area, I drove down there to meet with the DA and he would not meet with me. He did give me a phone call and he started talking statute of limitations and couldn't do it. Meanwhile, we had a DA in North Carolina where two of our cases wound up, they were criminally referred to him. We knew for a fact that the State Board of Elections had investigated what we had handed them, and they concluded that it was indeed double voting in between Florida and North Carolina. They were both Democrats, and uh, we got into the meeting, and the, the DA was, a, he had an R behind his name, and he, uh, he hemmed and hauled, and I mean, I had a Medicaid fraud investigator with me, a guy who had 40 years experience dealing with prosecutors, and his, uh, what did Hemingway say? That we all should be born with a built-in, shockproof crap detector. And my God, <laughs> his went up. His, <laughs> even his was going. <laughs> so this, this DA wouldn't do it. He would not pull the trigger on these investigations. Wow. And we think it was just because he didn't like the optics. If it had been a Republican, he might have done it. But because of a Democrat, he didn't want to be accused of something. And so instead, he laid low. And uh, dang, if he didn't get nominated by Senator Tom Tillis in North Carolina, got nominated to go to be a U.S. attorney. So, and before he did, we dusted him up pretty good. We we dirtied him up pretty good, but Trump didn't pull the nomination because we actually filed legal paperwork against him to see if we could make him prosecute that those cases, and he still didn't do it. He just shrugged it off, and I doubt President Trump even knew about it. But we were hoping maybe in our naive way we thought. Boy, if Trump sees this, he'll withdraw the nomination. But, you know, we didn't understand Washington. It's such a, you know, it's, you know how it is. It's, it's very corrupt up there. <laughs> well, this whole idea of justice delayed is justice denied. And I think that's what we're experiencing here. You bring a case. I brought a case in 2010 of coercion of voters. And they said I didn't have standing. Uh, so they would not even hear the case. And I, I brought it, of course, before our uh, Attorney General and Secretary of State here in Nevada, but also to the Department of Justice. So it's it's one of those things where you get uh, mired down in the deep state, I guess, and they they realize that if they just don't deal with it, it probably goes away because, as he said, statute of limitation and all that. So we have a real problem in our country getting people to be forthright with us, don't we? Yes, but the solution really is pretty easy. And the solution is get involved. Quit assuming the government is going to conduct the elections. You know, you look in Philippines when uh, Corazon Aquino, her husband, had been shot and killed by Ferdinand Marcos right before the election. And Corey ran in his place. 
And um, I remember reading accounts, this is back in the late 80s, against a corrupt dictator. And people ran alongside the vehicles from all the precincts carrying the ballots just so there wouldn't be any flat tires or any kind of things that would delay the ballots from certain precincts. And they escorted those ballots all the way to headquarters. And that's the kind of ownership we need. We need, we need you know, tens of millions of people to take ownership of our process. This, the, the politicians have taken it over and we've let them. So who's, uh, pardon the term, who's more stupider here, them or us? We're, we're sitting there, oh, oh, the government will take care of that. They'll do right, won't they? Yeah, and NPR gives balanced news. Of course they'll do right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are coming to you from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network studios and around the world on the Internet with TalkStream, Live iHeartRadio. Tune in, Net Talk America, and AMFM 24-7. We're also uh, joined today on our AUN TV Labor Day Telethon talking about stolen choices with Jay Delancey, our guest, who's the director of Vote Integrity Project, North Carolina. He's been talking to us today about election officials. How do we get through to these folks about these illegal voters? How do we participate in the process? And on the other side, I know Rick will want to follow up on how do we participate? How can we be some of those runners alongside those ballots going to be counted. We'll be right back after this message. Attention homeowners. Do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 800-917-8671. Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind in financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled regardless of your medical condition as long as you make your premium payments. 
get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. If we want to welcome you back, this is the Conservative Commandos radio show, as well as Stolen Choices, our Labor Day telethon. And uh, for a rebroadcast of our shows, check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. And our Labor Day telethon will also be, ro- be rebroadcast on aun-tv.com. Jay Delancey is our guest. He's the director of the Voter Integrity Project, North Carolina. And uh, Jay, I want to thank you for holding through that break. And I also wanted to thank you for your service to our country. God bless you for that. Thank you, Jay. Jay, we're talking about election officials in New York and North Carolina ignore evidence of illegal voters. Now, these are people, these illegal voters are actually voters that voted in both states. Is that correct? Yes, either that or someone voted for them in one of the other states. But, at, you know, either they voted twice or they voted once and somebody voted here in their name. Yeah. That's what we, 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 we lack the resources to determine that because we have to look at actual signatures. And we need well, elections. Jay, how did, you, how did you find these voters and how many voters are you talking about? Okay. Yeah, when we start talking the, the actual numbers, um, people will they'll go, oh, big deal then. Of all those voters, only that many. Uh, I will say it was hundreds um, of illegal votes. I will say that. And percentage-wise, they broke 52% Democrat and uh, twenty about, about 25% Republican and another 15% that were actually... I'm blowing that. 60% were Democrat or Democrat-leaning and 25% Republican, and the rest were unaffiliated. The the problem with that is that um, we found it, to answer your, your first question, how do we do it? We started with the state boards of elections with their own data. We matched the voter records and voter histories of millions of voters. And then uh, we threw out a lot because we're a non-governmental organization with very limited access to public information, you know, only to public information. So we threw out a lot of cases that if we had the kind of resources that law enforcement people have, we would have found a lot more of them. For example, we, we found a matching first name, last name, date of birth, and voter history. And we'd start with that. And then we'd look at things like... Um, these public websites, like uh, the kind that any decent dad would use and finding out about the guy dating his daughter, you know, like Ancestry.com or My Life or Been Verified or there's about a dozen of them, you know, just ways, you know, someone could stalk their ex-girlfriend or whatever, you know, just just those kinds of sites. And what we're looking for is people who, um, if they are registered in New York, let's say, uh, you know, no offense, but say Rick Trader registered in New York and Rick Trader in North Carolina, and we find out Rick Trader had a wife in New York on one of these sites named Jennifer. And Rick Trader in North Carolina, same date of birth, but he had a, a wife in North Carolina named Mary. Now, with a name as unusual as yours, we might dig a little deeper and, and look to see if you have any common kids. If the New York says they got three kids named you know Sarah... Sarah, Moe, and Sally, and the North Carolina says the same, well, we got a match. But if it 
if there's any ambiguity, we just throw them out and move to the next yeah. one. So we're not well, looking. My at wife, them. my wife Mary's going to want to know who Jennifer is. You know, she'll want to check that one out. But so we're uh, secret safe with me. Don't worry. So Don't Jay, worry. Jay, other than that, is there other evidence that you can use, like the signature, or have you been able to talk with any of these people and question them? Say, hey, is this? Uh, is this a Jay Delancey, North Carolina? By the way, do you also live in New York? Did you take those measures? I hadn't thought of that. Uh, we don't want. We do not like to approach them because I don't want to tip them off mm -hmm. that we know they did it. I'd rather. Well, I've first... seen a video. I saw a video. I wish I could find it. I see so many videos where one girl actually admitted to double voting. Well, we did get that in Florida, but the guy was behind a screen door. It was hilarious because the Secretary of State blew us off so badly that we uh, we just turned it over to some TV stations. And one of the guys, they went around knocking door to door, and they found a guy who admitted on camera. You couldn't see his face, but he was behind a screen door, and a cuckoo clock started going off as soon as he explained why he did it. It was hilarious. It was <laughs> great television. <laughs> but we cannot wow. look at signatures. We're, we're not allowed. Uh, we can look at them, but we can't photocopy them, so we can't. It's just really hard to do. That's because they've locked it down in the name of privacy to the point that it has become secrecy. And this is a big problem with elections. Our government hides that information from us in the name of privacy, when really it's about preventing anybody from looking over their shoulder and seeing how elections are being potentially stolen. Jay, have you ever heard of uh, a citizen's arrest? Uh, yes, in North Carolina, it has to be a misdemeanor, and for us, it's um, those well. Are isn't this a felony? Isn't uh, voter fraud a felony? I well, I would think if you've got evidence of of a crime being perpetrated, it's your duty. It's your duty as a citizen to report it, right? I, so, I hate to be charged with a false arrest, though. I need to look at the evidence before I can do that. And what we could do is a citizen grand jury, but those are only, you have to get them, in North Carolina, we have to get a magistrate to swear it out, and then we get the grand jury, and then we can present evidence. Uh, however, if the crime is a felony, that option is not allowed in North Carolina Constitution. It has to be a misdemeanor. So felonies have to be investigated by real district attorneys who can cover up the crime, which is what they do. <laughs> Those jerks. <laughs> well, Jay, why are you bringing this out now? I mean, why didn't you bring this out a month or two ago or six months ago when, you, when pressure could really be applied to these district attorneys and, you, and, and attorney, uh, U.S. attorneys to, to, to make them do something? It's getting a little long and a little late in the game, isn't it? To have an yeah. effect, well, at least for this election. Well, absolutely, Rick. It's always a problem that we wish we had it sooner. And to get into why we did it, it comes down to the weeds of, of computer programming. We had some breakthroughs that enabled us to do this, where we had, we had, the state had successfully represented uh, their public information in such a way that after we did the Florida project, they, uh, like the game of whack-a-mole, every time we would prove fraud, they would figure out a way to prevent us from proving it the same way again. Mm -hmm. And a couple of months ago, we had a breakthrough with a, a programmer who figured something out, and we were able to work with public information to match uh, some critical information we needed in order, in order to identify the North Carolina voters, because we just didn't have enough information to to go forward in North Carolina, and now we do, so we're back in business. You know, Jay, people's signatures change over the course of, the, of their lifetime. I know mine has. My signature's changed a lot, a lot. But I'll tell you what doesn't change. Person's fingerprints or their DNA. Maybe what we need to do, you know, we talk about voter ID. Maybe when somebody votes, they need to leave their fingerprint or lick something in, to leave their DNA as evidence that, yes, this is who they say they are. And maybe the thought, the, just the fear that you're leaving a piece of yourself there will prevent voter fraud. Either that, Jay, you know, you gave the statistics, and this is going to make my friend Sharon Angle cringe, 
one more time. <laughs> but my theory is, in order to finally get fair and honest elections, both sides are going to need to agree that we have a problem. Seems like, especially the other side, the Democrat problem doesn't, the Democrat side doesn't think we have so much of a problem. Maybe the solution is Republicans need to get as devious as the Democrats. For instance, things with like ballot harvesting. They need to get as good at it as the Democrats are. That'll drive the Democrats to the table to negotiate fair and honest elections. That's Rick Trader's theory. Shoot it down, Jay. I see you're also cringing. Yeah, we, we actually had a Republican who was pretty good at it in North Carolina. So the State Board of Elections went after him in 2018, him and him alone, leaving five other Democrat organizations unmolested in their ballot harvesting operations. And they've got him tied up in court. And it's, it's amazing. That really opened my eyes to how corrupt the election officials are in North Carolina. I can't speak to Nevada or California, but I'm Pretty sure it's the same problem there, too. They're just corrupt as they can be. Well, I'll tell you how corrupt they are in New Jersey. We had a governor, Brendan Byrne, who said when he died, he wanted to be buried in Hudson County so his vote could continue to be counted. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Delancey, director of the Voter Integrity Project North Carolina, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, tell our audience how they could follow you, find out more all that good stuff. Okay, sure. Uh, our website is voterintegrityproject.com. That's voter, singular, integrityproject.com. Uh, we have a news feed there. We have, uh, of course, uh, you, know, you can sign up for our blast emails. And uh, if you scroll down, there's even, uh, we don't call it an RSS, but any story we post will come up. If you put your email address in there, it'll come up. Okay, enough tech stuff. Our Twitter is at votechecker. So uh, I am vote checker. That would be me. And we, uh, we've had that Twitter page for a while and we'd love for your people to follow us there. And then uh, you can find me personally. Uh, uh, my Facebook is almost full. So our organization one is Voter Integrity Project. We're on Facebook. So yes. Jay, one, one quick question. I got to ask this question before we leave. Why are you doing this? Well, I swore an oath when I, when I became an officer in the military. I started as an army private and I swore an oath then too, but I don't remember it. I remember as an officer, though, it was uh, to, to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And when you retire, you don't revoke that oath. You, that's, it's in my DNA now. It's, it's, I'm hardwired that way. My mother, I blame her for it, making me civic-minded at a much younger age. But I just care about this, and it all got started when I wondered why it was so hard to get a voter ID law passed. Mm. And the answer has amazed me. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Delancey, again, we want to thank you so much for joining us. One more time, that website, Jay. Thank you. It's voterintegrityproject.com. Jay Delancey, again, thank you so much for joining us. Again, thank you so much for your service to our country, both in your military days and now what you're doing now. And this is the Conservative Commandos radio show and also Stolen Choices. Don't go away. Sharon and I will be back with more right after this break. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Broken AC, $4,600. Water heater, $1,500. Fridge on the fritz, $1,000. You need home warranty coverage from the Home Service Club for around a dollar a day. If any of your covered appliances and systems break down, HSC will either repair or replace them. HSC provides coverage of up to 47 different appliances and systems in your home. I trust HSC. HSC 
has over 15,000 pre-screened, highly rated technicians with the fastest response time in the industry. They cover everything from ACs, stoves, fridges, pool pumps, and more. Call the number on your screen now for a free, no obligation quote from a trusted HSC specialist about a home warranty. Well, Sharon, that just about wraps it up for today. I want to thank you for sitting in as my co-host. And Sharon, before we go, please remind our audience about our Labor Day telethon. It's coming up. Labor Day, we're having a telethon from 9 to 9, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, we're co-hosting with Joe Messina, the, the Real Side, and we've got lots of interviews, uh, like the one we did with Jay Delancey today, and also with Jeff Cruer. We've, uh, we're just exploring this idea of election integrity, and we want you to join us there. You can also go to websites. It will be featured there at aun-tv.com featured on Election Integrity Project Nevada EIP and V, EIP-CA.com, EIPNV.com, and also, of course, CCRshow.com. So there will be lots of ways, even if you don't live in Northern California, to be able to watch the telethon yourself. And we'll be okay. premiering the documentary, Stolen Choices. All right. But for right now, we are out of time. We got to run. We got to go. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you tomorrow on TV and on radio.